So here's the situation. You know you're gonna be grilling something up and at the end of that cook, you're gonna have charcoal left that's burning. Now, you could just smother it and reuse it or if it's at the end of its life, get rid of it. But if you've got enough heat left in that charcoal, you can make some fantastic desserts out on the grill. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. This is one of my favorites. It's an apple pancake that we're gonna be doing in a cast iron pan. So let's get started. Wanna get our wet sort of mixture ready first and we're gonna start with a cup of whole milk. Next up, two eggs. We've got three tablespoons of canola oil and half a cup of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this together well. Break those eggs up, get everything incorporated. All right, we're gonna set this aside and get our dry ingredients together. So I have two cups of all-purpose flour here, and to this I'm gonna add three teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm gonna mix these together. Now we're gonna get our wet mixture back here. We're gonna add our dry ingredients, and we're gonna mix this together really well. You have a beater, you know, an electric mixer, you could use that, but we're gonna go old school by hand today. We don't want any dry spots in this. We want all this flour and the dry ingredients incorporated. Make sure you scrape that bottom there. Now I've got three small Granny Smith apples that I've peeled, cored, and sliced into, eh, not super thin slices, but you'll see. And we're gonna fold these in. It's a lot of apples in this apple pancake and that's the way we want it. Some people like to dice up the apples in here. I like the big pieces of apple. All right, let's get this into our cast iron pan. So I have my 12 inch cast iron skillet here. This is the one without the long handles. It's a nice thing to bake in. And I'm just gonna grease this up with some butter. This is unsalted butter. Make sure you get those corners down there. And we're gonna get our apple batter in here. all of those apples out of there, all that batter that you can. This will also work in a 10 inch skillet. In fact, that's probably a little bit better size for this, but I like my 12 inch skillet. I'm gonna go ahead and spread this around here. Just try and get a even layer, as even as possible. I wanna take some apple slices from another Granny Smith apple and just place these around on the top. Now I'm gonna to top this with sugar. You could just use, I don't know, some cinnamon sugar that you make with some ground cinnamon mixed at about a one to 10 ratio with table sugar. But I'm gonna use some coffee sugar. This is brown cane sugar that I have some coffee beans mixed in that they've been in there for months. It adds some flavor to it, it's great. So we're gonna sprinkle some of the sugar on top, not the coffee beans. Any coffee beans try and escape and get in here, I'll get them back out. Now the temperature we want our grill at is 350 degrees. That would be the same temperature if you're gonna be doing this in the oven. Grills don't always cooperate and hold that even temperature at 350 for something like this, especially if your charcoal is sort of on the, the dying end of its life here. What you wanna do is bake this on the grill until a toothpick comes out clean or say the end of your temperature probe. If it was at 350, generally that's gonna be somewhere around say 35 to 45 minutes, but it can be a little less, a little more. I would start to check around 35 minutes or so with a toothpick or a probe in the center here to see if it's coming out clean without any wet batter sticking to it. And if it is, then it's done. Then we'll bring it back inside, let it cool down and give it another little bit of a flavor on top once it's cool. So let's get it out to the grill. It's 
been 20 minutes. We're gonna turn this 180 degrees. All right, I see a little bit of batter on my probe. I'm gonna let this go another 10 minutes. We're gonna turn it another 180 degrees again. Here it is, fresh off the grill. It took 50 minutes. My temperature ranged somewhere between 325 and 350 most of the time. It actually held 350 a little bit later, so it took just a little bit longer than I expected. But now we are gonna let this sit and cool. I want this to cool completely. Now, do you have to do this? No, if you wanted to, I'd give it 15, 20 minutes. You could slice into it, maybe serve it with some ice cream but I want it nice and cooled down because we're gonna put a little bit of a drizzle topping on it and that works better when it is cooled down. So I'll see you back here, I don't know. I'm gonna wait probably three or four hours to let it completely cool. And then we'll give it a good topping and have a taste. So our apple pancake, sounds like I'm saying apple pancake, but our apple cake in our cast iron pan is completely cooled. And what I wanna do now is get a little bit of a glaze ready that we're gonna drizzle on top. And we're gonna start with two cups of powdered sugar. To this, I'm gonna add milk, whole milk. And I'm gonna start with a couple tablespoons and we'll see the consistency. Might need to add some more. You just wanna get in there with a whisk or a spoon and start stirring it together. Sometimes you wouldn't believe how little moisture it takes in a powdered sugar icing. But you can see right there, it's absorbing all that powdered sugar and starting to thicken up. A little too thick, I want to add just a little bit more milk here. Maybe another teaspoon. Now I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla. Make sure that's completely incorporated here. That's what I'm looking for. A ribbon that just dissolves right back in to the icing. All right, let's get our apple pan cake, apple cake in the pan back over here. And the only reason I have that little piece of cork there, that trivet, is because the bottom of this pan does have some marks on it and it leaves a, you know, a kind of a dark mark on whatever it sits on, so I don't want it to get on my cutting board. And I'm just gonna take a spoon and drizzle this icing around. No particular pattern. I don't know, go in a circle. Get into the middle some more there. You could also color this icing if you wanted to, if you wanted to give it, I don't know, maybe some sort of holiday theme, green or red. And then just sort of mix it up a little bit, go back and forth. Or get really precise. Whatever you wanna do will work. Now I'm gonna let that icing sit on here for about 20, maybe 30 minutes until it just isn't quite so liquid. It'll harden a little bit. And then we're gonna cut in and have a taste. So it's been about 30 minutes. If I touch this right here, it's still gonna be tacky if I press down, but it's not gonna be liquid anymore. Let's go ahead and cut a slice. The other reason I like using the 12 inch pan versus the 10 is the slices are bigger. Oh, look at that. All right, I'm gonna plate this up so we can have a taste. Now this would go perfect with some whipped cream on top, some ice cream, anything you want, but honestly, I wanna taste it just as is. And there are a lot of apples in here. I think you can remember that from the amount we added in. It's gonna be very apple-y and I love apples. So let's see. Hmm. 
it is sort of the best combination of an apple pie and cake. Apple flavor throughout, but that solidness of a cake. And I love that this is something that you can do on the grill after you've cooked everything else and you got a little bit of heat left. To me, this is that sort of fun barbecue dessert that you can whip up. Kind of impress people with it because it doesn't seem like something that you're going to make on the grill. It looks nice and it tastes great.